A few weeks ago, I posted a video on this channel generally discussing the Sixth Amendment, your right to a speedy and public trial, and the Speedy Trial Act, which was enacted by the Congress. Now, we spoke generally about those provisions. In this video, we finally have a case from the Ninth Circuit where a person is arguing that he has a right to go to trial during a pandemic and he's refusing any continuances. So let's take a look at this case and see how it plays out for him. In this video, we'll be discussing United States versus Olson, a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal case that literally just got decided on April 23rd, 2021. So if you're watching this video when it comes out, it is fresh off the press. And if you're not, I encourage you to click that button that says subscribe and also the bell notification button. So next time I post a video, it is fresh off the press for you as well. Now, United States versus Olson deals with the Sixth Amendment. Remember, the Sixth Amendment guarantees your right to a speedy and public trial, but it does not tell us how quickly that trial needs to come around. Instead, we have what's called a Speedy Trial Act, which was enacted by Congress. The Speedy Trial Act tells us that within 72 days of the indictment or the initial appearance by the defendant, the person must have his trial. But of course, it wouldn't be a law without exceptions. We have a bunch of exceptions. If we're doing a competency evaluation of the defendant, pretrial motions, unavailability of the defendant or any witnesses, and so on, all of those can delay your trial. And there are other exceptions. A continuance of the trial might be necessary if ends of the justice served by taking such action outweigh the best interests of the public and the defendant in a speedy trial. And there are also other factors that are enumerated in the statute. It tells us that failure to grant a continuance would likely to make a continuation of such proceeding impossible or result in a miscarriage of justice. So in some situations, we have to continue because if we don't, it would be impossible to proceed on the action. So those are your exceptions. I know this is not a full statute. I welcome you to open up the statutes and read the whole thing. These are the parts of it that are important for this case and during the pandemic. We have Jeffrey Olson, who is a California licensed physician accused of illegally prescribing opioids to his patients. Two patients have died and he continued to prescribe this medication slash opioids. In July 2017, he gets indicted. What is indictment? Well, I encourage you to watch my videos on indictment. It literally means an official charging document. In the federal system, you can either be charged by what's called an indictment, an official proceedings, or information, being informally charged. In this situation, he was indicted. He made his initial appearance July 11th, 2017. Remember, that's four years ago. He was released on bond and his trial was set September 5th, 2017. So at some point you go, wait a second, if his trial's in 2017, what does that have to do with the pandemic? Well, in some circumstances, your attorney might ask for continuances or the government can seek a continuance of the trial if they need it. So in this situation, there were five stipulated continuances, meaning that the government and Mr. Olson's attorney agreed to a continuance. And so the court continued the trial five times. On the sixth request, the government objected. They said no, they were not agreeing to a continuance. Well, the court granted it anyway and set trial for May 5th, 2020. Now, of course, we know what happened in 2020 we had the beginning of the pandemic in March. So this trial was impossible. Next, we had the seventh and eighth continuance that are both by stipulation. 
Well, because none of us knew what's going to happen with this pandemic, we were just continuing trials for most cases. And in this situation, Mr. Olson is out of custody, meaning he's on bond, he's working, he's doing whatever he needs to do. And so his attorney was probably less concerned about him not going to trial. The trial was set for August 20th, 2020. And at that moment, Mr. Olson invokes his speedy trial rights. The government asks for a continuance. They ask for this trial date to be moved. But that motion is denied by the district court because the district court says that failure to grant a continuance would likely make a continuation of such proceedings impossible. In this situation, the district court says the trial is not impossible. They, they later dismiss the whole case with prejudice, meaning that the government cannot file the case again. And the court says that they denied the continuance by the government, requested by the government, and they dismissed the case altogether because the Sixth Amendment and the speedy trial rights are not if a trial can proceed, but rather how it should proceed. They also said that it might be unsafe for the trial to go forward, but it's not impossible. And finally, you've noticed that I've stressed the fact that it was dismissed with prejudice, meaning that the government cannot refile. The district court said that the reason why they did that is to have the bite on this proceedings. If they did not have the prejudice, that meant that at the end of the day, the government would simply refile the case and come around the whole continuous situation whenever the pandemic was over. So instead they did with prejudice to show other US attorneys that they need to proceed on cases. So then, of course, we have the government appealing to the Court of Appeals, the Ninth Circuit, saying that this was not a proper reading of the Speedy Trial Act. Here's what the Court of Appeal tells us that when we're talking about impossibility, we're not dealing with literal impossibility. And they cite to two other cases. There was a case when St. Helen uh, erupted and the court had to be moved by two days. There was another case where there was a strong uh, snowstorm. And because of that storm, they had to delay the court, the trial by eight days. In both of those situations, of course it was possible to hold trial but it was just not practical because transportation was not working. Um, you had situations with witnesses not showing up, uh, maybe the defendant himself. So there's issues, but the court says that the reading that it has to be literal impossibility is not a correct one. The Court of Appeal also says that Olson's unique facts have to be looked at and the district court failed to do that. In this situation, we have eight continuances, which means we have years of continuances. Remember I said this case started in 2017. We're dealing with four years of continuances. And we also have to look at what the government did. Prior to the pandemic, the government was ready to go forward on the case. It was the defendant who didn't want to go to trial. And now the government is going to get punished because the court refuses to have trial. Well, the Court of Appeal says that's not proper. And finally, the court, the lower court, failed to look at non-statutory factors. Here's what the Court of Appeal says. We have to look whether the defendant is detained or not. Obviously, if somebody's detained, we have more concerns about him going to trial. How long he's been detained? Has he invoked his Speedy Trial Act? Has he said that he wants to go to trial? How susceptible is he to a virus? Is this an older individual? Are there pre-existing conditions that we have to worry about? The seriousness of the charges. And this is really whether the charges are a violent crime. If they dismiss the case, will there be recidivism? And finally, is there an ability to safely proceed to trial? Of course, it's not going to be perfect, but at least we can try. And finally, the defendant says that when we're dealing with miscarriage of justice, this is a very rare circumstance. And it is not often that we should be using that part of the provision. 
it's specifically been said by Congress that it shouldn't be used that often. But again, the Ninth Circuit says, well, the pandemic is pretty rare. So it is good use of that part of the statute. So what did we learn from this video? What did we learn from this case? Well, I will tell you that if you're going to have a good argument that you need to go to trial, you got to look at these factors. And in this circumstance, I would say that this case was just not good on facts to go to the Ninth Circuit. It was not ideal. I expect that we're going to see more of these cases. I will also expect that if somebody is in custody, they will have a stronger argument that they need to go to trial and that it would be a miscarriage of justice not to set it to trial. What happened in this case, by the way? Well, the court said that the dismissal was wrong and that the reading of the statute was improper. There's no need for literal impossibility. So instead, they remanded the case back to the district court and told the district court to grant the government's continuance and set it to trial. So once the pandemic is over, we can have that trial. Or they can do the trial during the pandemic if they can do it safely. By the way, this case is from the Central District of California, which now says that they're going to start doing trials in May of this year. Now, our district has been doing trials for the last several months. It is small trials, not multi-defendant trials. And those that can go forward rather quickly within a day can be finished. And mostly people who are in custody. But there are exceptions to the rule. There are cases that still go to trial, even with people on bond. So you need to speak to your attorney whether you should be making an argument saying that you want to have that trial versus if you want to sit off, if you're on bond and doing well. I have other videos where I encourage my clients to do well on pretrial because it goes a long way. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so next time I post, you'll be first to know. And if you have a case in the Southern District of California, give me a call because I can help.